training institutions in, uh, in July, I'm sure they will be able to go and better revised training curriculum, mm -hmm. a revised uh, national service approach, and then when they complete, I think they shouldn't be able to serve the country yes. better. We are also hoping that um, one way of strengthening national youth service, after maybe within three months, mm -hmm. we should be able to recruit what we call cadets. Oh, yes. Cadets, mm -hmm. that means people who have a, a certain professional qualification at graduate level, mm. and they can come, if you look at the National Youth Service, it has got School of Engineering, it has got Technical Vocation Training, mm. it has School of uh, dress, uh, Apparel and, uh, and uh, Fashion. So if we can start now growing our own staff from yeah. cadet, then we can now identify people who will be able to run and strengthen the institution. Mm. So the message here is um, every institution needs to be strengthened in terms of being a very, having a very clear mandate, mm. having a very clear strategic plan, and then the structure that can be able to, to deliver the, 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 the mandate, yes. and then very clear policies, procedures, and the people. Yes. So that when you talk about a strong institution, uh, the way we have been trying to build national youth service is to, so that it can deliver a strong institution always delivers on its mandate mm. in a transparent, accountable, and uh, responsive manner. Yeah. So that's how you would measure. So I would say right now, maybe National Youth Service is able to change its uh, responsibility around 70%. Mm. So it is a journey. Which As opposed continue. to how things were yeah, before. Be, yeah. And I think in, since that is kind of true, we have not had another scandal, and we are not expecting another Yes, scandal. and you know, just echoing and the uh, words of the DG yeah, herself, yeah. <laughs> she, she was here and yeah. she said, you know, we should mm. not expect uh, yeah. NYS3. Yeah, and if it happens, we will know where she to place the She would resign. Yeah. <laughs> and they should come for her in the yeah. office. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I'm also happy because uh, we identified her, yeah. and uh, we felt, uh, yes, for the very first time, National Youth Service is having and Director General, who is a woman. A woman. And she was going to deliver. And it's only yesterday she was gazetted as a full Director General. So she confirmed. has done well one yes. year. And now she's confirmed. She was gazetted. And we are very happy that we are going to support her. Yes. And uh, we keep on saying the Minister of Public Service uh, General mm -hmm. is uh, women land. We have very many women. My assistant, uh, Rachel Shebe, mm -hmm. she's a woman. The PS gender is a woman. We have one man who brings diversity, PS youth. <laughs> <laughs> gender bad. Yes, just balance so we are aware of that. Yes. So we would want to promise Kenyans, and of course, since His Excellency the President has trusted us to do this job, we, would really, we are not expecting another scandal. You're going to deliver. Yeah, yeah we are going to deliver and okay. live with that organization better than we found it. All right. Yeah. Now, when you just look back at your own career journey, the growth you have seen from the time you were a teacher at Ngara Girls mm. um, up until now, you know, you have gotten so many global recognition. You have been to the public service. You have been in the judicial service, an associate professor being recognized as one of the most influential women um, around the world. What would you say have been your guiding principles in your career journey to ensure that you're not just being limited? You know, society already has dictations for you as a woman mm -hmm. but what would you say have been your guiding principles that have ensured that you know mm -hmm. excellence has been one of the core um, values that you sought out uh, thank you thank you very much Jane uh, sometimes uh, I never kind of stop to think yes uh, what I do I do is because I'm a woman mm -hmm. uh, my guiding principle has been whenever you, you are given an assignment do it well and do it as if nobody else has ever done it. Mm. So I'll do all what it takes. And I can see maybe they started right in primary. Yes. When I was in primary, and uh, just like any other child, I was very keen that I perform <coughs> well academically. Yes. And I did, and I went to high school. Alliance uh, Girls. I, I was fortunate to go to Alliance Girls, and uh, this is gave me an opportunity and an environment mm. for very, uh, very good quality of education. So I think also for women, Getting good quality education is, is, is important. I can say is one of the things that many times to build your capacity, you have quality, you have to have quality education. Mm. So women, if you want to progress, let's look for education. Invest in your education. This was known many many years ago that yes. when you indicate a woman, 
you indicate a community. Society, yes. When you indicate a man, maybe you indicate an individual. So I think uh, women who are knowledgeable, who are kind of uh, educated in their professional line, the, to me, is one of the determinants mm -hmm. how we we progress in our career journey. Yes. So for, for that, being clear what you want in life is one principle, so that uh, as you get opportunities uh, to, 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 f to, to demonstrate that uh, you can give results, mm -hmm. then I think it's also very important to know that you will do what it takes. If it's education, because many times, Women are saying they cannot do some of things because they lack confidence. Yes. Why don't people have confidence? You have con you will not have confidence when you don't have the knowledge. Mm. You will not have confidence when you have not had like a role model so that you feel you are sufficient, you know, mm. in yourself, so that you are able to know what are my strengths that I should capitalize on and what are my weaknesses that I need to do something about it. Mm. So I think education, knowledge, training is important for any woman who want to progress in their career. Mm -hmm. And that's what I say, and also clarity of what you want to be. Knowing, knowing yourself yeah. and where you're headed. Uh, knowing yourself, where you are going. I would say, uh, for me, right from primary, mm -hmm. I admired my teacher. So I wanted to be like my teacher. You wanted to be a teacher? My primary school <laughs> teacher. And I said, okay, it was clear in my mind, I want to be a, like a teacher, my teacher. But then when I went to secondary school, I said, but even I can be a better sec teacher in secondary school. Uh -huh. So I think uh, through that, many times we ask uh, children, what would they like to be? Some, my journey has not been like I knew all along mm -hmm. I was going to be a professor from early days. Yeah. But I knew I had a, mo a model that I would want to become a primary school teacher. I was then saw the secondary school teacher. And I said, actually, you can be even a teacher in the university. Why not so be a lecturer? So can you be raw in a way that uh, people can have different paths yes. so long as they are clear what they want. Yeah. Uh, so what I would say, in my case, uh, and maybe to others, that even when we ask children what they want to be, give them an opportunity so that uh, they can be able to, be, to have a clear mind what they want to be. So one of um, saying no pattern you don't have to compare yourself with somebody else, mm. but you must be clear what you want to do. You must work hard. And uh, I would also add that um, anything that has made me progress, it has to be challenging enough. Mm -hmm. Even let's say at a, from four level, it is challenging to do K those days. KCSC exams at form four were very hard. So sometimes you feel like uh, some anxiety. You don't know if you are going to pass but you work hard anyway. Yes. So that has, and when you work hard, you pass. So, and even when I went to the university, anything that has made me progress and I would like to share it uh, with everybody else, if you are not doing anything that is challenging enough to the extent that you want to give up, it will not take you anywhere. Mm. If you are just doing average challenges. So you must look at what you want to do. You find it challenging enough, but when you go through it, it gives you a bigger opportunity. You come out a better person, yeah, a better version of yourself. Completely, and with the lessons learned. Um, uh, for example, when I went to do PhD in, in the US, mm -hmm. that is a real challenge because I have to leave my family to a bit grown and my husband and to travel to do a PhD, which will take you four years. Mm -hmm. Of course, maybe I was able to come for short holidays and also to collect the data. That is very, very challenging. But after I completed my PhD, it gave me now more opportunities. I could instead have said, now I can't go to do PhD because I have a family, I have a teaching job. But I realized if you really want to be promoted in the university, mm -hmm. you have to have a PhD because you will be reminded in many ways. If you don't have a PhD, then we can't promote you. Yeah. Let me say, and uh, this relates to many people or many women who are told we can't give you this because you don't have, go and get it. Then they will not have yeah, any then reason. Th then you have no reason to kind of sulk or to be sad about it. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't allow, uh, I don't allow myself to be told you can't do this. Because I, I ask why and what would it take? And just as I said, you have to know your strength and weakness. 
I knew very early I was not a science-based person, mm -hmm. but I was more to one social sciences. Mm -hmm. And uh, even when I was growing up, I had a tendency to sh teach, to organize others. So I know my strength. You were more artistic minded yeah, so that than I don't scientific spend minded. Yeah. A lot of time trying to be like somebody else. Mm. So I think to me that that's important. Taking a challenge, you learn. Taking a challenge prospels you. But uh, another thing I've learned that um, any challenge that I have come to overcome, mm -hmm. a lot of people have been along the way. Mm, there are people who have been yeah, there before My you. professional colleagues, my families, my team, they have always been supportive. So supporting one another as women, I think is very, very important. And also being aware that the, the road is not going to be easy, it's mm -hmm. going to be bumpy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, another lesson that I've learned that uh, with all what we are doing, all of us, uh, it, it can be challenging, but we shouldn't be able not uh, to give up. We shouldn't give up. We should persist. And uh, as women, because um, it is harder to lead as a woman, mm. because uh, as I said, many people are socialized, and uh, there are many pre prejudices, stereotypes, and uh, women face more challenges than men. But what I'm saying now, today is better than it may be 15 years ago. Yeah. When I started working, women are no house allowance. But people like Wangari Madhari, Ma Madhari and others, Phoebe Asio, they fought for it. So I don't have to fight that now. Now I would have different challenge. And as you mentioned, gender-based violence, mm. we are seeing that, uh, take for example, women who want to go to elected uh, position, like a member of parliament, a senator, one of the things they are facing is a lot of violence. Yeah, just even born yeah. from the recent events. Yeah, even when you look at the kind of utterances and uh, the ridicule, so we get those stereotypes, um, prejudices, violence, mm. and of course, sometimes even lack of finances to be able to do what we want. So I think if for women it is harder, but the good story is mm. gender mm, equality and women empowerment it's not a Kenyan thing only. It's but a global. That's yes. why, as you see, in Sustainable Development Goal, goal number five is about gender equality and women empower empowerment. So it's a journey that we must all take mm. and recognize the many, many women in this country who have really played a very significant role to empower women. And uh, I think that's why every year, His Excellency the President, the last two years, he has been able to grace occasion to be able to award mm -hmm. women trailblazers yes. who have shown the way, who have persevered, so that the things we are struggling with, mm. they already dealt with yes, a long time so that ago. the future generation doesn't future have generation. to Now problems. women can have property, yeah. like property and matrimonial uh, inheritance. Are yeah. there. So they are even in judicial has also done quite a lot to bring justice for mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. In executive, you can see in appointment, now we have the 30%. Uh, we are actually talking about 30% women uh, in know, appointed position. So I think with the constitution and the gains within the constitution. We are gaining must, traction. Yeah, yeah, we have really gained uh, on this gender equality and the women empowerment. Okay. And I can say thank you to women who are there before us because we stand now on their shoulders, having been very articulate mm. in making sure what is captured in our constitution now is implemented. It is implemented, yeah. and it for us even to find space there. Mm. That's why I think even right now, women, uh, we need a strong women movement right now, mm. so that even if we are talking about constitutional or maybe uh, review or referendum, mm -hmm. what story would women have today mm. to add to the gains which are in this constitution? To leave so a and um, in the yeah, of um, time. we are we are as a ministry responsible for gender. Mm. We are thinking through that so that we are saying we need strong women, strong women who other women, when they look up to them, they can see them, they are taking them somewhere okay. as far as review of the constitution is concerned. Mm. And I hope we will be able to have uh, quite a number who yes. can uh, champion that mm -hmm. so that when we review the constitution, besides and gains now we have, we would have uh, on the constitution we would build on them. To make it yeah. better. And that is exciting. Yes. Because I, when, when I was growing up, it was much harder. Mm -hmm. But now I can see the gains. Yes. But let me also say, as a minis uh, ministry responsible for 
gender affairs, mm -hmm. we are not just about women. Do you, gender but you know, the misconception that comes <laughs> with gender affairs is yeah. that it's a women thing. Yeah. Why yeah. is that still so prevalent in this day and time that we're living? Given from what you have seen since you assumed mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. why is it perceived as a women's a women thing? You know, perceptions are, are, are based on what people see. Mm. I think the fact that uh, uh, girls were disadvantaged early alone, mm -hmm. there have been from a lot From the beginning? Of, from the beginning. Yeah. We, I think if, even if I be wise, yeah. you see the women who are like the second is, uh, class. Even just from our culture, the fact that yeah. you, know, you value having a son mm. over a daughter. Yes, yes. And you find even when uh, education in this country if people don't have resources early alone days, now at least the it's free education. Yeah. That's why the government says, let the education be free mm. for everybody. Because in some communities, they are likely to take a boy to school compared to a girl. Who will be married so, off. Yeah, <laughs> and we, then say this, in any case, girls are going to be married off. Yeah. So I think uh, I, I, in that context, uh, that's why there's that perception that uh, girls are more empowered. But from where I see it, we want to empower both. Mm. Both boys and girls need to be empowered equally so that they can take opportunity. We want opportunities going to the boys and the girls equally. An even playing field. An uh, even playing field. Mm. Nothing, nobody wants anything more and, no, and, and girls should not get anything less. Yes. So with that kind of perception, then uh, historically, then you see people are likely to think, oh, there's much more being done for girls mm. than boys. But uh, I always ask that uh, uh, women also have got a very critical role because they are both girls and boys. Mm. So the tradition of laying emphasis on the boy, we could also be the source of that perception. But I think what now we know better, that give opportunities to both. What boys can do, girls can do. What girls can do, mm. that. But, and we are not comp competing. We are complementing each other because we have got uh, each w gender has got its specific roles. Mm. So I think uh, moving on, uh, we don't want to empower girls to the detriment of boys. Mm. We want both so that um, you can't empower one at the yeah. expense of the other. And I've heard that a lot, and we have asked University of Nairobi now mm -hmm. to really to carry a study mm. so that we have evidence and the data that is showing the boy's child is being disadvantaged because of empowering girls. Mm -hmm. Because we also don't want to be distracted by somebody saying that so that we lose focus on empowering women empowerment. Mm. But we also don't want our boys disadvantaged to the extent that they are not coming up. You know, sometimes I hear when you go to schools now, girls are more forthright coming. And at the same time, we know also from girls, Jane, mm. if you are very forthright and you are very competitive and uh, you are very bold, it's also still not welcome. Mm, you're deemed as aggressive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, you know, th that is, you know, kind of not very easily accepted. Yeah. But I would say now it, it's almost 60% accepted, mm. but there's a time it was 10%. So I think moving forward, we should have an inclusive society yes. that is giving each a man or a woman a equal, equal space to make a contribution mm. for the well-being of the society. Yes. And we know, as the president has always kept saying, that without inclusivity, then we cannot uh, so we can't gain our social economic mm -hmm. aspiration that we have as a country. Yes. And of course, that's why you, s you saw him in Canada. Mm. They're the champion for women, women yeah. and girl empowerment. Yeah. Uh, at the global level. Mm. Yeah. All right. Now let's just quickly have a look at your docket, you know, public mm. service, youth and gender affairs. Um, this Friday uh, will be the African uh, Africa Public Service Day. And of course, we cannot have a day when you're celebrating, you know, the public service without considering the youth as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe what you could tell us a bit about, you know, what to expect in terms of when this day comes um, as a nation, those in the public service, you know, and also in the private sector for that matter. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, public service uh, is very critical in any government. Yes. Because every government has got uh, a mandate that it should provide goods and services to mm. its citizens. Mm -hmm. And the only way they have to do that is through public service. So in Africa, through African Union, uh, we have what we call a biannual conference where we come to reflect, mm -hmm. debate, and compare and showcase how public services in Africa are uh, performed. Different countries. Different countries. Yeah. Because public service, uh, per se, or what we call public administration, how countries are governed, uh, 
it should be more or less the same. The way you go to get maybe passport in Kenya should be the same way you get Tanzania or Uganda mm. or Cameroon. These public services or health services, education services, security services, all these require to be more or less of to the be same norms yeah. and harmonized. So that's why we are having Kenya mm -hmm. uh, is hosting for the, I think last two years we were in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. This year, 2019, African Public Service Day is being celebrated here in Nairobi uh, on Friday, that is on 21st, is the opening day. Mm -hmm. And what we expect, uh, we have uh, an opening ceremony where every will be able to know the, the status of public service mm -hmm. across Africa. And then we will be able to have exhibitions where different countries are trying to show how public service is performing in their countries. Yes. We have also, we have decided that uh, we need to have uh, an innovation award mm. where countries have submitted what innovation they have come up with in the public service. And those innovations have been evaluated mm -hmm. and they are going to be awarded and recognized. And what are we as, as a country presenting? In our country, we have done, Kenya. We have done a lot. Look that we're going the, to be presenting look at the, at the Uduma competition. Centers. Yes. Tunduma Center is one government supermarket for services. You go to Tunduma Center, you get birth uh, certificate, mm -hmm. you get um, a national hospital insurance. So you get public service services in one uh, kind of uh, back under of one roof. Under one roof. Yes. So those are great innovation. We are also having other innovation where you say. In public service, we have been talking a lot about corruption, mm. but not everybody is corrupt. So we are having a program that is, is, is looking at, are there public servants who are giving excellent service and they are not corrupt? So that we start talking about those recognition, who are for recognition those. of yeah. those who are, according to the public and citizen, they see them as people who are above board and mm. they are not corrupt. So there are many I innovations. But I don't want to say everything so that you can uh, also they come, can come <laughs> and be part of <laughs> and this be day. part of it. But there will be that um, innovation week uh, showcasing what African countries are doing. So I think, uh, and at the same time, the academics mm -hmm. they will be able to show kind of present papers mm -hmm. that give us an opportunity to reflect mm -hmm. and see what new models are working in different countries. Yes, uh, schools of administration. Uganda Institute of Management, mm -hmm. Kenya School of Government, Tanzania Public Civil S School, they will also be kind of showcasing and the presenting papers or models that have worked in their countries mm -hmm. that we could share. Above all, there is what we call African Public Service uh, Values, Charter on Values and Principles of Public Service. Mm -hmm. That also will be able to say this is one, two, which all African countries are implementing, yes. and if they implement this charter, they shouldn't be able to upskill their public service. Mm -hmm. You need to ask what do we have for the youth. Youth in this conference have got a whole session where youth is having part of their parallel session going on okay. because we believe sometimes youth must talk to themselves mm -hmm. and they what they agree as areas of implementation, then it can be shared with the whole conference. Okay. So youth is having a big event. The PS, Dr. Wino, is championing that mm -hmm. with a team uh, of inter-ministerial organizers who are making it uh, sure that it's not just public service for the without the youth. Mm. Because the youth of this country, in fact, even the theme, it has got youth inclusivity and the ICT. Okay. Mm. All right. Now, before we... So uh, I appeal to Kenyans to come. and especially senior civil servants and yes. public servants, please... Uh, come to KICC on uh, Friday uh, at uh, 8.30. You'll be able to get keynote address. And we have also one background paper that is very insightful, which is going to be presented by Commonwealth Secretariat mm. on uh, the tools, uh, public service tools for implementing sustainable development goals. Okay. I think every senior public officer needs to hear that mm -hmm. because if they are tools, you don't have to struggle yeah. with the thinking how 
to implement sustainable development goals Utilize in your what mandate. Is there. There's already a tool that you can use mm -hmm. and then maybe learn from it. All yeah, right. Yeah. Now, before we um, run out of time, let's just have a quick look at what is happening on social media. Remember, mm -hmm. the, remember the hashtag is uh, Good Morning Kenya at KBC Television is our official station handle. My handle is at Jane Wamboy. There is Kab Kabura Karimi, who is asking, you know, as the CS of uh, Gender Affairs, what is your view on the trending violence against women? Mm -hmm. Just in light mm -hmm. of what we had just uh, touched on earlier on, mm -hmm. but for the benefit of just answering her, your thoughts when it comes to what we have seen the, um, just recently, the assault of Wajir uh, women rep, you know, uh, the booing of uh, Sabina in her own mm -hmm. hometown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think gender-based violence is a crime. Mm. I think we, we as a ministry, as a government, we have been very, very forthright in fighting it. So we have seen uh, kind of gender-based violence is kind of, uh, maybe the cases are being reported more than before, but I think it's a crime. And we, are, we as, a, as a department responsible for for gender affairs, mm. we have various interventions where we are sensitizing people that it's a crime and uh, how you people find themselves in a situation like that, how they should behave, yeah. how they should report it. We are working with Inspector General to have all the police station people where they have been trained how to handle when people have been uh, violated. So yes. that when they report, many times we hear that when they report, they are seen as, uh, you know, they're ridiculed. Yeah, yeah, they're ridiculed. But now we have trained quite a number to man those desks so that people should feel free to go and uh, report. We have also a, a line, a line, um, a, a line, a helpline. If somebody has gone through uh, any of that gender-based violence, mm. they can be able to call 11195, mm -hmm. which is one way. We have also... Just uh, give this number again. 1195. <laughs> as a, a helpline yeah. where someone can call wherever they are if they are they, they are faced gender based violence mm. and gender based it's not only also for women even men the, a few men it's only that maybe men don't report as it should uh, we are saying any violation any assault is an attack on the basis of on gender. the basis of gender yeah. uh, is a crime and mm -hmm. it should, even the law is against the law mm -hmm. and the people should be punished we have also partners with development partners to have kind of safe houses where people like we have in Kiambu and have, this is being championed by women representatives, the members of parliaments who are women rep. Mm -hmm. Some have taken initiative to have safe houses yes. so that if somebody is violated, they you can have somewhere here. to go. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you know, FIDA has been very much in the forefront to help women who are violated through their legal process. Mm -hmm. So I think. Um, we re really, as a country, we cannot be so primitive and continue with gender-based violence. Yes. Everybody needs to know it is wrong, it's against the law, and I think we are not going to keep quiet as a ministry responsible for gender affairs when we see gender-based violence cases increasing. And also on the appeal to the society, to the communities, to speak up mm. and so that uh, they mm. don't end up with the people uh, being violated and keeping quiet in silence, yeah. in silence, and that's why you saw recently uh, mm -hmm. through embrace the women movement that is trying to please peace, uh, cohesion, and the uh, social economic development come up at the University of Nairobi with the event of Vajir, Vigil for femicide. Mm -hmm. So I think let's not keep quiet. Let's support those who are facing gender-based violence. Yeah. Let's involve all partners as, and the stakeholders mm -hmm. so that um, it, it is it is really traumatizing for anybody to be assaulted or violated because of their gender on the basis and of we are not going gender. to accept yeah. it and we are going to do everything possible reporting is one uh, is capacity step. is the first step yes and uh, for girls i tell them before you are sorted if you realize it's going to that direction walk away there there, there, there is kind of a um, a capacity building that you can see this is going to lead you to some violation mm -hmm. or assault, then you need to know how you should behave. Walk away when so you can. Yeah, yeah, when you can and uh, report it and uh, rather than be confrontational. And then finally, mm -hmm. uh, you end up with the, with the, with the, with the some assault. All right. Yeah. Now, as we bring the conversation to a close, you know, um, 
AFCON is, uh, will be starting this Friday, the African Cup of Nations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, KBC is the official broadcaster. And Kenya is going to be part of this uh, mm. uh, competition. Mm. Now, Harambistas will be playing. But, you know, what would be your message to our players and even Kenya in terms of supporting our own, mm -hmm. you know, the role of the citizen when it comes to supporting our very own? Mm -hmm. What would you like to tell the Kenyans? I'd like to tell Kenyans that uh, anything that uh, our young men or women uh, are doing for the nation, mm. we should really cheer them up, we should motivate them, we should feel they are doing it for the national honor. Mm. And, uh, the, uh, and uh, I think that is part of service in my view, that uh, whatever we do, we don't do it for ourselves. We do it for the nation, we do it for humanity, mm. we do it for God. So for, for that the good of all. This is for the good of all of us so that moving forward, mm. we have, it's a pride for Kenyan for them to bring uh, the cup home. Cup <laughs> home. And that's what we are bringing. So I want every Kenyan to kind of support them, cheer yeah. them up, encourage them. And uh, let us not, as Kenyans, spend a lot of time to glorifying the negative things. Mm. Let's glorify the 10% that is working, or even 20 or 30. But uh, sometimes it's easier to blame and glorify what is not working rather than praise what is working, no matter how small. Because a positive out outlook attracts another positive. Yes. So even for the youth, for women, let us every time think more positive mm -hmm. rather than thinking about it. That has been my experience. Yeah. Every time I face a challenge or something is not working very well for me, I'm always looking what is good in that situation that I can run with and you forget what is not working. The little shimmer yeah, of hope is yeah, better to yeah, hold on to yes, as yes. opposed to focus on the negative. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, the law of attraction actually mm, works. Yes, yes. And, uh, that has been my experience. So if whatever doesn't work for me now, I'll leave it and move with what is working. Yes. And I think as a country, uh, Kenya is a blessed country. Mm -hmm. If you look around, much as people might be saying, oh, we, we are experiencing some levels of poverty, but we should uh, appreciate we have moved for the six percent of our population mm. to that six percent. So we are saying that the six percent of Kenyans are living below poverty line, mm. but we have come from for 56 to 46, and now that is six. Yeah. So let's now say what we need to do to move that that six percent of Kenyans in, in who are living in below poverty so that they can be able to have a better quality of life mm. in terms of access to education, access to health services, access to well-being, so that now they can put food on the table. Yes. And that's what we are doing with the women, giving them uh, women uh, affirmative fund so that they can be able to do small businesses, youth uh, enterprise fund so that they can go into small businesses. Mm. And we know not everybody can go into businesses. We have then technical vocation, education, and training yes. for those who can go and learn a skill that they can make them get a job mm. and, and get and be to be employed and they help themselves first, help their families, and of course serve the nation. And you so encourage the women and the youth to take up these opportunities that are there. I want to encourage these youth funds, especially because you know we complain there isn't you know money mm. for the youth, um, there isn't you know, money for the women to start their own businesses. But mm. are they really stepping up yeah. to the table yeah. to you know meet meet halfway? Mm. You cannot have everything given to you. Jane, you are very right. No opportunity will come through for a woman or a youth. Yeah, they must step up to there and be clear. That I am going in business. I can start selling a few of some wares and it, my business can grow. Mm. I am not good, but I can become a, a, a plumber, I can become a mission, I can uh, become an electrical technician, mm. all these crafts and technical course. So people need to know themselves what they are good at. But let me say that opportunities don't go through for people. People spot opportunities, and 100% can spot opportunities, but maybe 50% to exploit. Yes. So it's very important to see what is the government doing. What opportunities are government putting, especially affirmative action fund, mm. uh, even the infrastructure itself. Look at the last mile connectivity with electricity. Mm. What can we do with electricity that we have not done in the last 10 years that we can be able to build the capacity? This is a great country with opportunities uh, compared with the men in the region and the women and the youth, uh, those who are taking those opportunities are moving forward. Mm. Let me say also, sometimes I find the youth... Briefly, as we yeah. wind up. As we wind yes. up, let's not complain. Let's find in the what 
can we do as a way of providing solution to mm -hmm. the what is being faced in this country mm -hmm. by the youth. Even I have come across, I can say 20% are very responsive. Mm -hmm. They know what they want. But there's a big percentage that is just waiting. Let's not wait. Let's go out there, mm -hmm. take opportunities, go to Tibet, take the loan, and then be able to respond to a certain solution. Mm -hmm. Even back at home, even agro business. Yes. We don't have food. What can youth do to get food that they can sell because everybody wants food yeah. and they make money. So there is angry business for the youth, angry business for the wi women. Therefore, I appeal to Kenyans, women, youth, and all of us, let's exploit the opportunities mm -hmm. and this country will be able to grow to in leaps and bounds. Uh, leaps and bounds yeah. as envisaged in Vision 2030. All right. And it's what the president has been preaching. All right. So, mm. as a youth, as a woman, anyone out there, don't wait for opportunity to come at your door. You know, they say opportunity dances with those on the dance floor. So, don't, don't just be seated there and expect for things to happen. Start with uh, what you have or where you are to just try and make good of what you have before you are blessed with more. And of course, to all our women out there, we trust that, you know, just from hearing from uh, the CS here, you are better able to change your state of mind because it starts here start here and then you will see the change just happening slowly by slowly and you will eventually get to where you want to be well we have been speaking with professor margaret kobia who is in charge the cabinet secretary for the ministry of public service youth and agenda affairs just talking about women empowerment and you know women break that glass ceiling don't let anything limit you and our male counterparts as well there are a lot of men in studio this morning Ahu uh -huh, to all the women out there. Yeah. All right, so thank you very much, Miheshimiwa. Thank you very much. All right, so thank Good Morning you. Kenya does continue. We want to take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. This is Good Morning Kenya. Keep talking to us. The hashtag is Good Morning Kenya at KBC Television is our official station handle. Tag us as well on those comments at Jade Mamboy, at Ray Manyara, at Ramagukko, and at Dorina Range. See you after the break. <laughs>